Number one, nanite features. Dynamic displacement. Before we talk about every change that might come to nanite, we need to talk about what nanite is. Nanite is a powerful tool in Unreal Engine 5 that makes graphics look amazing while keeping them efficient. It can show super tiny details in lots of objects without slowing things down. It is the tech used in those hyper-realistic games. Now, after we know what Nanite is, we can talk about the new dynamic displacement feature. This basically describes the ability to change or modify the shape of objects in runtime using a displacement map or a procedural material. Do not confuse this with world position offsets, as they are only able to change the vertices of the original mesh. While this new feature changes the mesh at runtime, adding additional triangles to fit the detail of the displacement map. This will also allow animated displacement driven by materials. The next Nanite feature is the support for Nanite spline meshes. We all know landscape spline meshes, right? They are the things you use to, for example, embed a street into your landscape. With the new change of Nanite landscapes in Unreal Engine 5.3, this new feature would fill a significant missing piece in the world of Nanite. This would improve the look of Lumen and also enhance virtual shadow map performance. This feature was released as an experimental feature in Unreal Engine 5.3, so you are already able to test it, but it may still cause crashes, performance issues, and other fatal bugs. Another change that might come is optimized shading for Nanite. The final goal of this feature is to fully replace the pixel shader path and move nanite materials from the traditional raster shading over to compute shaders. This allows for very advanced nanite materials and optimizes the rendering of shaders for more performance on both the CPU and GPU while also improving the code maintainability. Let's continue with number two, larger worlds. The current maximum world size in Unreal Engine is 21 square kilometers. This change would add double precision transforms, allowing the maximum world size to be 88 million square kilometers. Just to put this into comparison, this is over half the size of our solar system. And compared to the current maximum of 21 square kilometers, this is absolutely astonishing. Currently, when you cross the boundary of 21 square kilometers, the player pawn gets deleted or if you are close to the boundary, it causes imprecision and jittering. With the change, this is not a problem anymore for nearly all of the projects you create. There is still a bunch of stuff to do for the Unreal Engine development team though, so do not overhype this feature yet. Number three, temporal super resolution. This built-in cross-platform upscaling technology renders the game not at full resolution to save rendering calculations. This is already a feature in Unreal Engine but there might be these changes. History resurrection. Occlusion, shading chances, or going out off screen all discard temporal super resolution data. With this new advanced feature, old temporal super resolution data would be saved in order to prevent noise or trail artifacts. This system would compare the saved data and the current one in order to resurrect the detail from old temporal super resolution data. Has pixel animation, material flag. This new material option indicates whether a material has animated textures or motion which normally would not be represented by the object's motion vectors, which causes flickering. This feature would fix that issue. Visualize TSR show flag. This is a visualization mode for you to better understand how temporal super resolution works. Let's quickly go through some of the other features that might come. Improved Lumen hardware ray tracing for better performance and quality to match the performance with Lumen software ray tracing. A next generation terrain solution. This allows for worlds with 3D modeling, layering, virtual textures, variable tessellation, and nanite support. The system aims to replace the current height field-only landscape solution in which you aren't able to create caves, for example, due to the system only being able to have only one Z value for every X and Y value. This is comparable to the Voxel plugin. Substrate, the new material system moving from experimental status to beta status. Performance improvements, more robustness, and more controllability for virtual shadow maps, support for shadows, translucency, and lumen for heterogeneous volumes. These volumes allow for integrated rendering of volumetrics like fire, smoke, fluids, and other things driven by Niagara or OpenVDB files. 
Orthographic rendering will maybe get updates like compatibility with temporal super resolution, water rendering, volumetrics, and improvements to Lumen, Hair, and Niagara, as well as reflections. Path Tracer will maybe get the ability for adaptive sampling. This improves render times by not continuing to render pixels that are deemed to be accurate enough already. Path Tracer will also maybe get denoising to improve the quality of rendered images. Faster shading cooking through optimized internal architectural changes. Parallel rendering. This enables running Unreal Engine titles in multiple threads to increase the performance of any project. Improved management of textures and other types of data buffers to meet a requirement for future ray tracing support for Vulkan. World Partition Runtime Hash. This new solution contains a list of different partition objects, which can be easily expanded to fit project-specific requirements. The new system comes with two partition types. One is the loose hierarchical grid, which uses the extent of actors to vary streaming cell bounds. And the other one is level streaming, the system we already know. Advanced logical data layer operations will maybe include operators like AND, OR, and NOT, which allow you to set rules when assets should be shown. Runtime hierarchical generation. This allows for dynamic improvements through complex user-defined rules, larger PCG worlds, and will also improve editor-only workflows. Metagraph. This new graph is a higher level graph, which allows you to define the execution scheduling and priorities while being able to visualize and manage all PCG graphs within your scene. There are also other small changes I haven't mentioned in this video, but we will definitely go over all these features if they release someday. So subscribe to not miss a new video. If you want to vote for features, you can do that by following the first link in the description. Also, please give us feedback on how you liked having me as your host. Goodbye!